What's up guys, Morgan here. Today we're gonna be talking a little bit about how to develop your sound design skills and kind of just how to practice getting better at production in general. Because a lot of people, they just, they keep on just trying to make music, but you sometimes you gotta learn what bigger artists are doing to develop your skills because just like in sports, you're practicing like 90% of the time, but for some reason with production, people don't have like a practice regimen. So I'm gonna just go over kind of how I develop my sound design skills and kind of just learn from bigger artists and apply that uh, in my own way. So I'm sure you guys have seen uh, the videos of me remaking a bunch of sounds. So the biggest way that I've found to develop your sound design skills is just to remake sounds from songs that are po like popular songs. So the, it'll be kind of difficult to do that to start, but the way that you kind of get to this point is like the, the first step would be to just open up Serum and pick a, pick a sound that you like. Let me get this. So what I would do is I just get a sound that I like and then just open up a new MIDI track and then slowly, one step at a time, just go back and forth between the sound that you like and try to remake it with the reference. Because this way you want, you can't really get lost. You could just always refer back to the answer. And yeah, this, this type of shit sucks, but it, it's just like running sprints in sports. Like you just got to do it. It's your conditioning. And once you get good at it, it stops being like a difficult thing that you have to do. And it gets fun as you learn more and more. So just like getting familiar with the basics, I would just go back and forth between uh, a finished preset and a blank one and just try to figure it out. And then, so after that point, what I'll do for my sound design sessions is um, I'll listen to like an hour long mix and I'll just try to remake sounds, but take them to the next level. So it, it doesn't benefit me to just be able to make it. I have to be able to be creative with it. So my goal is always to make the sound and then make it a little bit better or different. And this is gonna be super frustrating when you start doing it, but if you just have a whole mix, set like a two hour timer, listen through a mix and just every time you hear a sound that you like, give yourself like 10 minutes to try to remake it. And even if you don't get it, you'll learn a little bit of something that'll develop on itself as we go, as you keep on doing it. So just to kind of show you guys how I remake the sounds. So here we have uh, the Fisher bass right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how I made these ones and then we're gonna, I'm gonna do one completely from scratch just so you can see exactly how I do it. So if I'm just trying to learn from one specific song, what I do a lot is if you do Command K on the keyboard, it brings up, um, you could set up, what's the word for it? it's like key mapping so you could set up like anything on your keyboard can control anything in the DAW so I just set up whatever key you want to the solo button on the song we're trying to remake and then that this way I could listen back and forth between what I have and what they have so okay so let me just show you guys yeah I'm not even gonna I'm just gonna do this completely from scratch so there's a couple ways to get like free answers. So if we're trying to make the baseline right here, I usually try to isolate as much things as I can just through the waveform. So this is gonna give us an answer right away. So if you see on the EQ, we can see that this is the D sharp one note. And that way what we could do is, I'll bring this MIDI up. Or no, let's do it completely from the ground up. Okay. So make a new MIDI here. We have a blank serum. Let's get this. So if we see this note is out there, we know it's for sure deeper. So we're just gonna start with that. And then from then what I'll do is I'll just make like a simple sound and then try to get the notes first. So if we listen to um, the reference, 
it's just a simple bass sound. I'm not going to worry too much about the tone of it for now. So we could just hear that it's a little bit darker sounding. So I'm just going to put a filter on it. And then we could also hear that it's like a pluck sound. So if it's ever a pluck sound, what that means is either we're moving through a wavetable position in here, or we're just filtering out the some of the frequencies to start and then making the envelope smaller. So, so just by doing that, we could hear we're a little bit closer. And then this is like super simple. This is just um, like, this is just three movements inside of Serum. So, and then I'm just gonna do a little bit of a filter envelope. So pretty close already. So I'm just gonna leave this here for now and then we'll get back to the, the sound design portion of it later on. So let's let's figure out the notes. So we know that's the E flat. Okay. And this is another quick way to just arrange it. So we have another note right here. And then if you just, just by looking at the waveform, you can just see there's another, you could also hear it, but you can see that there's another note like right here. And if we want to figure out what that is, again, that's the, the D sharp. And if you just at the bottom left of the EQ8, like over here, it shows you what the note is. Let me see if I can, yeah, right there. And so for bass steps here, so we'll go do, 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 do. So let's go ahead and duplicate this. And let's say we couldn't really hear exactly where it's coming on the grid because this one does have a lot of swing on it. So if you zoom way in, you could see exactly where the note lies. Because you can see this waveform is a little different than this one. So if you it's swung a 64th note if you look down at the the swing down here, or the uh, the grid down here at the bottom. So it's not quite, so if we go just to 16th notes, it's not quite on the 16th note, but if you make the grid smaller, it's gonna show you the note comes right there. And then you could just Command E to separate that, and then you'll just put it right there. So there's a bunch of little like tells within the song that help you figure it out without having to do a bunch of guesswork. I guess guesswork, so we're just gonna kind of figure out the pattern here. Okay. So we have another long note right here. Another note right there. This one's another one of those stutter notes. And then you'll you'll learn as you keep on going that like once you figure out some of the little intricacies, like they'll kind of be the same throughout the song. So again, we have we pretty much just have these little delayed notes and then the longer ones. So here's a delayed one right here. We can see the waveform. And then we have another long one. And then I'm pretty sure it's just a two bar phrase. Let's see. Yeah, so it's all pretty much a two bar phrase. So let's fill out the rest of it here. So, bam, bam. There's one right here. Okay. That's just the kick right there. So there's another one right here. Another one right here. And then another one right here. Another one right there. And that's about it. So from there, 
we just got to figure out what the after we figure out the rhythm right here we just figure out all the different notes so so we have another and i'm just looking at the highest point on the eq so that's the low d is the middle note right here and pretty much once we learn that much i then just go back and forth and listen to it so and then just making them the right length here so if you do command a and then make them legato they'll just all touch each other and then just if we just listen back and forth so now that we know that this one's just an octave down we could just turn the reference back on so now we know the kind of the rhythm right here dun 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 dun. So you can kind of hear that it switches right here. So we. So this is a new note. So we just gotta. Eventually you'll be able to hear it, but I'm just gonna use the EQ trick. So now we can see this one's F sharp. And sometimes it's hard to tell, but you just gotta zoom in as, as far as you can. So if we go. So, and then I, so now, so because we see that all these are all the same, they're just octaves, then I would kind of just guess that these are all going to be the same way. So, and then. So if, let's listen to the reference one more time. So we have one in the open right here that we could tell. That's gonna be the G right there. So we know that this Skippy one is the G. Oh yeah, and before, oh, so this one, that's oh, probably gonna G sharp, yeah, okay. So now, dun dun. So let's just try this. And then we just have that last note to figure out. And this one's right in the open right here. Oh, and you could also just, if you wanted to figure out the tune, you could just low cut it or low pass it and then use a tuner. And it's, we got a G note. It almost wants to be the A sharp though. Sometimes they're just like weirdly tuned, which is not a big deal. And then let's listen to what we have so far. I think this one's gonna be. Let's double check that. I think I missed something. G zero. Yeah, so that's pretty much what we got there in terms of the notes. And then we're, we're actually pretty close to the sound already. So let's just listen to the sound here for a second. So I could hear that it's wider and then softer. And then I could hear at some points that the filter opens up a little bit. So the sound actually is pretty simple. 
mainly it's just going to be a little bit more touchy on this yeah so i'm just moving the filter type because the sound is a lot softer in his and then it's also wider so i'm just going to mess around with let's try a little bit of unison to start yeah so that's already pretty close Turn down the blend a little bit. And you know how we heard that um, the filter was coming up in a little, in a little, some of the uh, notes. So if we do filter key track, what this means is that it's just gonna move the filter up every time we play a higher or lower note. So if we play a higher note, the filter's gonna come up. If we play a lower note, the fil filter's gonna be at a lower position. Yeah, so that's pretty close. I'm gonna try to do this a little bit more drastic on the filter. So that's already pretty close right there. And then, so say it wasn't as easy of a sound to remake, kind of a couple different ways that you could tell the waveform and stuff to use. So if we just solo his again, we could see the harmonics involved in it. So what that means is like, so if, I'll just demonstrate this really quick. Um, so saw harmonics look like they're every harmonic in the series and then what that means is just all the little lines that show up on the eq so it's just every one in the series and if it doesn't have all those it's going to look like this So that means uh, square wave, it ha just ha only has odd harmonics. So as you can see, we missed this middle harmonic in the middle. We're gonna, we missed this one in the square. So we're on the square right now. Yeah, so that's how you could tell whether or not it's like a square or a saw. And then most of the time, it's gonna be a bit, like almost 90% of sounds are basic shapes with some filtering and like distortion or a little bit of effects. So you could just count on that, try that first, but we'll we'll get into a little bit more of like crazy techniques later down the line. But yeah, so for the most part, that's all the like little stuff that I use to like learn from somebody else's song. So. Yeah, we could probably add some effects just to sort of Yeah, so that makes it a little bit warmer. And then some EQ. Yeah, and that's with pretty much basically nothing. I, I, that's the, the most simple serum patch in the world. So that's those are kind of all the little techniques that I would use when you're trying to um, remake a song. 